surprise you every day. A better term might be peaceful. Now, truth be told, the past year or so in Ponyville had been unusually eventful. Nightmare Moon had only been the beginning, but then there had been uh, Paris Sprites, the Ursa Major, the Dragon, countless other things in the Earth Forest that she could, she only heard about, but but hadn't actually seen, and. That time when Twilight had cast that spell on her old doll and Bonbon and Lyra had ended up giving each other some ugly bruises. Things like that never happened in Des Moines. Humans were completely in control of their world. It seemed Lyra couldn't forget what Princess Leslie had said about the war, but she hadn't been hadn't seen any humans carrying around weapons. It was hard to imagine Audrey, Nathan, or anybody else she'd met doing something like that. Lyra had settled into a routine, spending most of her time working on her guitar playing. She was picking it. She was picking it up fast. Music had always music has uh, 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 uh. <laughs> music had always come naturally to her, so it wasn't a surprise. The guitar itself was easy enough, but that amp confused her. It was necessary to get. It was necessary to get any sound, but she hardly understood how to u how or why. Nathan's books had helped too. It turned out that guitar was based on based more on chords than individual notes, so it wasn't quite like her lyre. She tried playing some old so song she had mem memorized from her gala performance, but on the guitar they didn't sound right. This was an instrument made for human music. She had asked Audrey if some music for some music recordings that she could try to listen and learn by ear. You mean, like rock music? Audrey had said. Lara nodded. Like, uh, what it said on the flyer. I don't know why those musicians are... Who those musicians are, though. I think my dad might have some stuff like that. Ask him. It was a Saturday. Audrey's parents both had work off today, so Lara found Audrey's dad in front of the television in their living room. They spent a lot of time there, but staring in at the moving images for too long would make Lyra's eyes sore. He noticed her before she could say anything. Uh, hello, Lyra. Do you need anything? Do you need something? She nodded. Uh, do you have any record records of guitar music, right? Uh, rock specifically? I'm trying to learn it. Uh, you were looking for guitar music. I thought Audrey had said you played a lyre. Well, I used to, but I want to learn something new. She'd been doing a lot of that lately, and music was probably the least confusing of it all. If I have, if I have something to listen to, I can usually play it by ear. Let's see. Uh, I've got a lot of music from the seventies, if that's okay," he said. Now, humans tended to describe a lot of things with numbers. He led her over to the shelf filled with thin cases, CCR and Deep Purple. I think that's. I think that one was on the poster I saw. These songs have guitar players, right? Lyra asked. It wouldn't be rock without them. He pulled a few of the square cases from the shelf. Those are what. You, those are what you keep music on. Lyra asked, taking one and turning it over in her hand. It was so small. It, small. I'm used to these other things back home. Uh, we call them records. That made him laugh for some reason. Uh, usually it's the kids your age who don't know h how records work. Do you need me to show you how to play it? She nodded. He opened up a ca case, moving his fingers quickly. He pressed down on the center. Hold it like this. Try not to get fingerprints on this side. He held the disc with one finger through the hole in the center. The other is on the edge. Lyra took it from him, carefully holding it the way he that he had. The light caught the silver disc and created rainbow patterns on the blank side. It looks amazing. I think that I think that there's a stereo in your in your room, Lyra. He said, "I'll show you how to play it." He hadn't noticed she hadn't noticed the stereo before because it looked like just another piece of furniture. The disc was hidden inside a tray that came out, and it would play music despite not having having a horn from the sound for the sound to come out of. But the sound was less scratchy, and Audrey's dad showed her how to skip exactly to the beginning of each song to play them on repeat. She listened to a song called Lodi, or Lottie, a few times. It was nice and slow. She could definitely relate to the lyrics. When she, 
Once she'd picked up out the lead guitar part, she'd practice it all that afternoon until her fingers moved on their own, and she could practically play it in her sleep. But when she'd been a unicorn, playing her lyre for too long could give her a headache. Magic required, magic required such concentration and mental focus. But playing either instrument with her hands was so much more relaxing. Once she got the song down, she could lose herself for hours. And in fact, she had. She had to remember to cut cut off her practice time once Audrey and her family were going to bed. Some ponies did play guitar, but Lyra had no idea how. Her finger and ponies played her hooves, but it didn't even come close to what she could do with fingers. Humans probably made better piano players, too. Any instrument, for that matter. It had been a little over a week since she'd started. It was hard to imagine she'd been human for that long already. Lyra was in her room, as usual, working on another new song. Sounds good. Sounds good! Lyra looked up from her guitar to see Audrey standing in the doorway, arms crossed. Thanks. Uh, I've been working on a new song. New one, Lyra said. Uh, how many songs have you learned? I think maybe three? She tapped her chin. No, four. It's only been a week. I know. Lyra went back to playing, doing the main riff from the song called Smoke on the Water. Audrey sat down down next to her and watched. It's weird. You're you're good at this. Really good. You're like a prodigy. Uh, my parents used to tell me that. Lyra smiled. Audrey just nodded and, nodded and stared at the ground. She stopped asking Lyra so many questions lately. Probably because Lyra had no intention of answering. Lyra set down her guitar on a bed on her, at her side. Audrey had a point. Point. She had learned how to play really fast. Lyra stood up suddenly and went to her bag. Her journal, her journal was right on top, right beside her lyre, which had sat in there unused for a while now. But all she needed was the flyer tucked in the front cover. Musicians needed. Lyra couldn't help but wonder if they were still looking for somebody to play guitar. And now she knew a little bit about Aerosmith and Deep Purple. Those were famous human bands, and she could play a few, a few of the songs off their albums. She sat back down next to Audrey, reading over the flyer to a few more times. You know, I think I could probably audition for this now. You're still set on that one, aren't you? Audrey said. Lara nod, nodded. How do we con contact them? You said you knew how. Audrey leaned back on her bed, supporting herself with her arms. It's been a while since you picked that that one up. They could have gotten another interested interested guitarist. I still want to try. You sound like you're ready, now at least somehow. Nodger shrugged. We could try to call him. Yeah, let's do that. Larry wasn't sure what she meant by call, but she was still getting used to human slang. Her parents had always wanted her to pursue her music career. In a way, that's what she was doing now. Maybe she wasn't a pony anymore, and maybe this human music wasn't what most ponies listen to, but... Lara knew they'd still be proud of her if they could see her now. Here you go, Maja said, holding something out to her. It was the thing that she'd called, that she'd seen Audrey use so often before, which by now she was pretty sure wasn't actually called Nathan. Lara took it, hes Lara, Lara took it hesitantly and examined it. Uh, what is it? Audrey scratched her head. Right, I probably should have asked you if you knew how to use a phone. Uh, well, no, Lara said, but I'd like to learn. Teach me? Uh, how exactly do I start? Audrey thought for a moment. It's weird. You catch on to music so fast, but you still have to explain things like this. Uh, please, just do your best. You'll put in... You'll put in a number for the of, off the flyer. Then just talk to whoever picks up. Tell them you saw their ad and you want to join the band. She paused and added, If they ask you how long you've been playing lie to them. Uh, all right. Lyra stared at the phone for in her hand. She tried to think of how Audrey had used it. So, these numbers. She ran a finger over them, like, lightly. I'll read it off to you. She started reading off the numbers, but Lyra cut her off. Slower. Audrey sighed and went back to the numbers, listing them off one at a time. Lyra touched each one of in sequence with, sequence with her fingers. They gave in just a little, and it let out a note each time. And now what? Lyra said 
after the last one. Just talk! Lyra held the phone up to her face. She could hear something buzzing. I is somebody there? She felt ridiculous. The buzzing continued, then stopped suddenly. Hello? The voice was actually coming from inside the phone. Lyra almost dropped it in her surprise, but caught, caught it just in time. Oh, uh, uh, who are you? She asked. Uh, do you have a wrong number? The voice said. Um, Lyra looked at Audrey for answer. Tell him you're interested in the band, Audrey said. Oh, right. Lyra wasn't sure exactly where to, to look. It was strange talking to somebody when they couldn't see to them. I saw this poster, and, I, and I'm a guitar player, so I was thinking, this is about the band. Yeah, great, the voice said. My name is Randall. I'm the lead singer and temporary manager until we get this spot, spot filled. When can you come over? It, it'd be great to get an audition with you. Oh, uh, Lyra paused. I think I can come, can come over whenever. She turned to Audrey, who gave a confused look. Uh, get his address, she said. Huh? Oh, right. Uh, where do you live? Lyra said. Audrey handed her a pen. Lyra juggled it in, <laughs> in the phone, shifting it to her other hand so that she could write. Uh, what do I do? What do I do with this? She asked. Write it down! Audrey put a finger on the fi flyer and Lyra nodded. She copied down what the voice on the phone told her. It sounded like an address. A lot of numbers were mixed in there, too. The humans seemed to really like numbers. Uh, did you get all that? The voice said. Lyra finished writing and nodded. Then remembered the human on the other si side probably couldn't see her either. Either She added, I've got it. My schedule's pretty open this weekend. I think you could make it tomorrow afternoon sometime. I just want to hear how you sound, and that's all. Uh, tomorrow? Lyra glanced at Red Audrey. Yeah, I'd like that. I'll see you then. Uh, bring your own music. I'm looking forward to he hearing you. The sound suddenly cut off with the, from the other end. Lyra held the phone away and stared at it, trying to figure out what had gone wrong. And press the red button, Audrey told her, and Lyra tried one. Tried, tried one. The one on the other side. She seemed to work a flash. Flashing time was displayed on the phone now. So what happens now? Fuck. So what happens now? Lyra asked. She handed the phone back to Audrey. You said you'd audition f for him tomorrow, right? Audrey said. My parents will both be at work again, and I don't have a car. She thought for a moment, then started pressing numbers on the phone again. Her fingers moved quickly. Lyra watched how she used it. It was much more natural and easy for Audrey. Hey, Nathan, are you busy tomorrow? The doorbell rang the next afternoon. That's probably him. Go answer it. I'll print, it, print this out. Audrey had barely looked up. She was using something she called Google Maps, though it looked more like another television instead of a map, and she was sitting way too close to it. Lyra headed downstairs and opened the front door. Oh, hey, Lyra. Nathan stood there, a ring of keys hanging from, from one hand. Is Audrey here? Uh, hi. Uh, Audrey's upstairs. I'm not sure what she was doing, Lyra said. They heard footsteps coming down the stairs, and a moment later, Audrey was there carrying a piece of paper. She handed it to Nathan. I just got the direction direction printed. Thanks for offering to drive her. Uh, not like I was busy or anything today. He said, staring down at what she'd given him. From the glimpse, Ly Lyra was able to get to get it looked like a map, uh, a very complicated one. I think I know where this is. We don't really know. We don't really know much about this guy, but he seemed... <laughs> he seemed okay on the phone, Audrey said. Just be careful. Will do. Nathan nodded and looked up at the at the map. Uh, ready to head out, Lyra? Uh, yeah. I'll just get my guitar. Technically, it's still mine. Right, Lyra said. She headed, headed back up to her room. She packed up the guitar into its case, slung it over his shoulder, and lifted up the heavy amplifier. Her fingers strained with the wa for, with the wave. Once she was downstairs, she almost dropped it in front of the two humans. And now I'm ready, she said, panning. I can get it to get the rest of the way. Rest of the way. My car's in the driveway. Nathan pointed pointed over his shoulder with his thumb towards the front door. Your Lyra followed him at the out to the front yard, where one of those carriages was waiting. 
it wasn't the same one that was usually dr usually there. This one was gray, and it was one of the smaller ones. We're taking that? Nathan slammed down a hatch on the backside. Yeah, don't worry. I haven't had my license that long, but I'm a very safe driver. You've got nothing to worry about. He circled around to one of the front doors and got inside. Lyra stood completely still for a moment, but he gave her a look as if telling her to get in. Go ahead and put the go ahead and put the guitar on the back in the back seat. He told her. She nodded and found the door handle. Her fingers slipped up inside it and pulled it outwards. The back seat was covered in all sorts of things: papers, a metal can, some shopping bags. She put the guitar on top of the mess, closed the door, and went around to the other side to get in the front seat next to him on the right side. There were all kinds of buttons, like the ones on the phone on the stereo, a lever in between the seats, and some kind of wheel in front of Nathan, like a ship. Like a ship, Lyra realized. He'd probably use that to steer. The seats were soft, but there was almost no legroom. Where'd I put that? He said. He looked over and found the map. Ah, there it is. Lyra was still taking inventory of the vehicle. A cup sat next sat near Nathan's seat. There is two indentations, perfectly sized sized to it. One next to it that had a few coins in it. He turned a key the, and the entire vehicle shook. There was a, some kind of loud rumble from behind them. Lyra could feel her heart pounding in her chest. It had been loud, and when they started rolling backwards out into the street, she could barely keep her eyes open. What's wrong? Carsick? She managed to open her eyes just a little, then squeeze them shut again. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll be fine. She might have been talking to herself. Lyra, you, have you ever been in a car before? Uh, one of these? Her legs tensed. She stared at them. Better those than the windows. A memory slid and played out in Lyra's mind. Rainbow Dash, pulling her out of the runaway apple cart just seconds before it careened over the side of a cliff. In this vehicle, they were completely enclosed and had even strapped themselves in, not to mention she hadn't seen a Pegasus in over a week. That didn't make her feel any better. Uh, well, once... Just once? He glanced over at her for just a moment, then looked ahead again. It... It's not exact... It wasn't exactly like this, but similar. We didn't have these where I was from. He nodded slowly, even though he was obviously confused. Don't worry, we're not going that far. He kept his eyes focused ahead, without turning when he spoke to her. Where'd you come from that that you're you've never been in a car before? Lyra sighed. Is it normal to ask this many questions when you you've just met somebody? Right. You've probably been hearing a lot from Audrey. It's not just you. She likes to analyze people, Nathan said. The whole reason she took you in is probably because you're such a mystery though it does make sense that she'd want to figure out more about you. I'm just a normal human. Lyra noticed her own reflection in a mirror attached to the side of the car. You really don't want to talk about it, huh? I won't pressure you. There's nothing wrong with me. Maybe not, but I'd sta still say you're a long way from normal. Nathan seemed completely calm. Lyra washed his hands, and that distracted her from what was going on. They gripped the wheel as they drove through the city, and he'd move it to either side when the carriage changed directions. As she'd assumed it, w it was a steering mechanism. After some ti time, Lyra was getting used to the motion, but she still felt curious about how this thing moved at all. They were going much faster than a carriage would. The speed wasn't as noticeable about from the inside as it was when you watched one of the one from the sidewalk. They slowed down again as they entered another neighborhood. The drive had only been a few minutes, even if it had been had seemed much longer than that. They must have been miles away from Audrey's home house. They pulled out up in front of a brick building, and Nathan was peering out of the windows and at the numbers on a mailbox. This is it. You're sure you want to go in there? That's where I'm supposed to go, isn't it? You had the map. Well, yeah, but he kept glancing around. I'm not I'm not nervous at all. I've been practicing a ton, Lyra said. I'm sure he'll let me let me join. Nathan just stared at her. 
That's not what I'm concerned about. Larry searched around for the release to the strap, crossed her ch chest, and clicked it down. She opened the door and stepped out, her legs still shaking. She braced herself with one arm against the car until it stopped. What are you waiting for? For Come on! Lyra, don't you think... Nathan st started to call out to her, but she had already grabbed her guitar and was head headed for the front door. He let out a sigh and left the car, double-checking to be sure he had locked it. She, she searched around the edge of the door. They don't have one of these. There was no doorbell. So she made a fist and knocked. It hurt her knuckles. They weren't as sturdy as a hoof. I'm just saying it. If this doesn't turn out well, just let me know. We can head right back, Nathan said. He made a gesture behind him towards the car. The door opened and another human stood there, taller and bulkier than Nathan. He lifted a hand to push his stringy dark hair out of his eyes. It was about as long as Lyra's own. Um, I'm here about the band, Lyra said. He nodded. Right, right. You're the girl who wanted to try out for guitar. I was expecting you. Come on in, let's talk. Lyra quickly followed him inside, but Nathan touched her on the arm. You're sure about this? Come on, he's a human, just like we are. I didn't doubt that. You guys coming? The man looked back at them. Uh, yeah. Lyra put a hand to the guitar case on her back and hurried to the living room. They were invited to sit down on a couch, and the other man took a lump, lumpy armchair across from them. He nodded towards Lyra. You were the one on the phone. He took... Looked over her. Looked her over. You seem a little young. Oh, it's fine. I'm sixteen. Right. You must be the one I talked to yesterday. He said. You can just call me Randall. His voice sounded kind of like the one she'd heard on the phone, but it was weird to think that that they had already talked if she was just meeting him for the first time now. She noticed the odd artwork on his T-shirt, usually unusually detailed even for human clothing. He had what must be a human zombie on it, and the words Iron Maiden in red. Are you the one in charge? Lara said. This wasn't like the audition she was used to com coming to. But then again, those had all been with ponies. Gotta say, I'm glad that we're, we've got somebody willing to be our guitarist. A band can't really hold itself together without one, one you know. Uh, yeah. So you're... Lyra. Lyra. His voice trailed off expectantly. She stared at him. Uh, that's what I said. You got a last name, Lyra? Uh, nope, just Lyra. His expression was blank for a moment. Then he laughed. Well, okay then. Just So just Lyra. Got any performance experience? Uh, yeah, a ton. She beamed with pride. I was chosen to play at a royal gala back home, as a matter of fact. A royal gala? A royal gala? He leaned back on a sofa. What are you, British? Lara frowned. I don't think so. Well, anyways, let's just... Let's hear what you've got. All that really matters is if you can play. Am I right? Yeah. Nathan st stood up. I'll go get the amp out of the trunk. You go ahead, Lara. He hurried out. Randall lifted a finger. So that was my friend, Nathan. He's lending me the guitar. She noticed on his left arm he was a, had a twisted, twisting black pattern. It looked like a dragon, like the one she'd seen in the dragon migration, or that time when Spike had grown to full, his full size. That was the only time she'd ever seen a full-size dragon up close. How'd you get that? Oh, this? Lift up his arm and glanced down at it. <laughs> I woke up one morning with a split, splitting headache, and this happened. Who knows what else went on that day, that night? Fascinating. Not only did this human have a cutie mark, he didn't even remember how he earned it. He opened a door and led her into another room. We usually play in here. I'll let you get get set up. He touched something on the wall, and an entire all an entire wall rumbled and started pulling itself up. Outside, Nathan was carrying the amp up to the house and walked inside the room where they were. He glanced around. Wow. A little literal garage band. We use what we've got, Randall said. 
It was like a tool shed attached to the house with a solid stone floor stained with something black. Lara got to work setting up the amplifier. It was still difficult to remember how to set this thing up. She kept it ready to be used in her room ever since the first time she'd used it, so that she could she wouldn't have to worry about this part. Now I need some help, Randall said, raising an eyebrow. Raising an eyebrow. <laughs> raising an eyebrow. <laughs> he took one of the cords and plugged it into the wall. Uh, no, I I think I've got it. Lyra was crouched down trying to figure out all the cords. She found the end that plugged into the guitar and clicked it into place, and then stood up. I'm ready. Let's hear it. He stood back with his arms folded. Lyra started into Smoke on the Water. It was her newest song, but one of her favorites. She put all her concentration into her fingers and the sound of the guitar. She practically forgot about the two humans standing there watching her, or the cold and dirty room they were standing in. When you really got down to it, this wasn't too difficult than trying out for a concert in Canterlot. If she was good enough at the music, she had nothing to worry about. After a few minutes, Randall raises one hand. That's fine, and that's fine. That's enough. Lyra stopped and lifted her head up. She brushed the, her hair out of her eyes. Uh, was it good? Yeah, great in fact, Randall said. I mean, I was just about to let you in no matter what you sounded like. We've been a bit desperate. But that, how long you've been, pl how long have you been playing? But that, how long have you been playing? Just about my whole life. It wasn't technically a lie. He just hadn't asked what she'd been playing or how Lyra flexed her fingers. No, who did, did you mean by we? I'll introduce you to the other band members later. The practice will be next Monday afternoon. So I'm in. Lyra started to grin. Welcome to Crimson Thunder. She couldn't believe it. A human band. She was going to be playing music with other humans. She ran up to shake Randall's hand vigorously. Thank you so much! He stared at her in mild surprise. Her wa his eyes wide up wide. I guess I'll see you then. Right. Monday afternoon. She nodded, still grinning. If she hadn't already been here for so long already, Lara would have sworn she was just having an incredible vivid dream. What would Bonbon think of her now?